So it's nice to meet everybody. Thank you for coming. My name is Tabby Voss. Um, I'm marketing officer. It's an appointed position. I'm in my second term. Um, as I was just explaining during the Meet the AMC session, I love Mensa and I want to represent it as well as possible to the market so that we get new members um, that appreciate everything about us. And we are a colorful group. So my background is in product marketing for a software company. Um, very different than marketing Mensa members, but I feel like if I can do software, there's, there's some things that are translatable um, and that maybe I can effectively market our, our island of misfit toys, um, as I like to affectionately call, call ourselves. So um, in this session, um, and I created it for the world gathering because I wanted to let local groups know that we care. Um, when I took over the role, the marketing committee was pretty much defunct. Um, we had a marketing officer, but they weren't really interacting with the committee. They weren't supporting local groups. And that's something that I wanted to fix. So. I will walk you through my committee, what they're working on this year and how they plan to support you. This is the very first step was creating this, this LDW, finding out what you guys need. So we're gonna talk about why marketing is important. Um, we're gonna talk about good messaging versus bad messaging um, for Mensa. Um, I'm gonna go over the results of the marketing landscape. So we did a poll for local groups um, publicity officers and LOCSEX to see where local groups fall in their marketing efforts and their desire for national level support. So only 33 people responded to my survey, which told me everything that I needed to know, <laughs> but I want to go through the results with you guys. Um, available tools, we're not going to go wander through the website, but I will share this presentation. It has links to everything on the website that affects local group marketing. It's a hunt and pack. So when I took this job, I was like, what is available to support local groups? Um, there's a lot, but it's all spread out and it's not necessarily been curated. So I'll show you what's there. It is on my agenda to fix it and to make it more um, easy to read, um, plug and play. And then we'll talk through some best practices for marketing. All right, why is marketing important? Um, top one is not super lucrative for you, uh, but there is some small financial benefit to getting additional members. One of you might know how much it is. I think it's like 30 cents or something. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not much. So I put that one at the very top. Social circle expansion and growth and visibility for your local chapter. We joined Mensa presumably because there is a fraternity here and a community and we wanted to be around like-minded people. We are all eventually going to die and we want new blood. Like we, we need it for our committees, for our XCOMs to inject new energy into our groups. Um, I realized how old I was when somebody asked me if we had a Discord server um, in MWM. And I was like, I've been, I've been leading the Gen X, Gen Y groups for the last seven years. And I feel like I'm not the right person anymore because Discord. Um, so we want to grow. We want to bring in new members, um, new passionate members. Um, and that ties right into additional volunteers to share the load because we can't all do this forever. Some of us are in our positions because nobody else wants them. Um, we wanna foster that volunteer spirit because we're a volunteer led organization. Um, this one, the, the next one, supporting the organization with new members and good PR is probably less important to local groups than it is to me, right? Um, I want this to be important to you because we wanna be proud of the organization that, you know, we have Mensa emblazoned on our shirts. Like I wear my Hell's Mensa shirt all over DC. I'm proud of it. I want other people to know how great it is too. So members are our best marketing tool um, along with local groups because I can give you guys best practices, but it needs a groundswell of people who care um, at the local level because so, so much of this is actually local. Um, so what's the purpose of Mensa? Um, if we want to talk about how to market Mensa, we should know what we are. Um, and not everybody actually knows this. So I put it in the deck um, from the constitution of Mensa. There are three main purposes and I will let you tell me which you think is the most important as far as marketing messaging. 
because there's only one of them that I can truly explain well and how we do it. Yes, yeah, yeah. Number yeah. three is you can explain better, but number yeah. one should be the marketing. Yeah, really. The marketing. It should be, but do we have great examples of it beyond foundations, scholarships, and maybe mental cares? It, it's a little harder to elaborate, and it doesn't necessarily speak to people as easily, although it's aspirational. Um, Tom online said number three. Yeah. Exclamation mark. Right on, Tom. Um, we do encourage research um, into the nature of intelligence, but I will tell you that's probably not why people are, are joining NASA. Um, number three is absolutely the reason, and it's the easiest and most accessible message that you can share. One of the things I've been able to talk to some of the parents about when they think they've got a smart kid, what do I do if they can, if the kid can join NASA? It gets them into any gifted, ch yes. gifted children program in the country. And when a parent wants to get into a better school, put the kid into a better school, that is a huge marketing thing because to get the kid in, get them in early, and it gets them what they need in the way of two hours of stimulation. Absolutely. I will add that to my list. Yep, that's good. So if we focus on, on the community, because I think that's the easiest one, there's some messaging that I've seen. Um, the first three bullets are, are messages that I have seen and I wanna talk about them because I don't love them all. Um, there's one that I hate and it's the smart kids club. Mm. We know that we're smart. We don't need to tell people we're smart. Um, smart has negative connotations. Um, it's not as welcoming. It's a little bit narcissistic and egotistical. So even though that's what this is, it's not necessarily the way that we want to brand ourselves. Finding your tribe speaks to me at my core. And I think it speaks to a lot of people at their core because it is, it's saying you have found the people that you can feel free to be yourself with. I'm not saying we should all feel free to be ourselves, but um, it's messaging that resonates with a lot of people without sounding egotistical. Same with they understand my jokes. Like there's some nuance there that you are interacting with very clever people that you don't have to outright say it. So um, this is kind of like where I'm trying to direct national level marketing branding towards. Um, our current tagline is where brilliance belongs, which I think is super accessible, right? It covers belonging, it covers intelligence without sounding like it. So, that I really like. I like focusing on the fact that we range from two to 106 and we only share one trait. Um, that makes it difficult in, in certain ways because, you know, as our only qualification for membership, um, it's easy to market that, but it's also, I don't know, it's, it's a double-edged point. But you get to attend entertaining, intellectually stimulating events, um, RGs and AGs and mind games and, and forums. We have so many national forums online um, through the national office and through our national SIGs. So there's just so much opportunity for people to take advantage and feel this belonging um, and also helping via community, community oriented activities and via the foundation. So. That's where I like messaging to be. And I did this exercise with my committee. Um, I love word clouds because you know you have people throw out a bunch of ideas and then the ones that come up the most are big. Um, so we did this exercise on the SIGs because I think the SIGs are one of our biggest strengths and we don't market them. We don't tell people about them. If you go online, you have to go behind a paywall to see anything about our SIGs um, beyond this little tiny short sentence that I have now reconstituted because I didn't think it was very good. I didn't think it told people what our SIGs were. Um, I'm in so many SIGs. I love them. The, the big words here, community, belonging, friends, club, outing, memories. This is not necessarily going to have crossover with the word cloud about Mensa, but I think it's a core part of Mensa. So this was an important activity for us to figure out what do we want to change in our national website to be able to rebrand six? 
and to be able to sell SIGs because it's a reason to join. Um, so I would encourage you in your local group to create a word cloud. Um, what does Mensa mean to you? What does it mean to your community? What, what do you want to bring people in to do? Um, and on your previous slide, this one, uh, another one before that, Denise from Alaska said number three. And thank you for joining Denise because it's gotta be some ungodly hour where you live. So, and then Tom says, here's another uh, term, mentally enriched normal seeking acceptance. Mentally enriched normal seeking acceptance. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Yep. Thank you for, for catching the comments. Um, yep. All right, here's where I wanna share my survey results with you guys. Um, and I'm hoping these get better. I'm gonna do the survey again um, to see if anything's changed. But just to give you a landscape and to get your feedback because this is my best touch point is to ask you directly. Um, so we asked about 20 questions. I'm gonna go through them very, very high level and quickly. Um, first one is how would you describe your local group's website? 50% of respondents have no website at all or have something built in GeoCities from like 1995. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I have cataloged all of the websites. Um, so I've got, I've got a list um, and we're working on fixing this for you. If you're interested, um, one of my committee members, Lana Lee is a webmaster and she created best practice branded templates for websites that are incredibly easy to implement. We have a volunteer pool of people who will implement it for you. Um, you basically have to do absolutely no work. We will hand it over to you and it's super easy to update. We have a an LDW that we're scheduling for November 22nd where I put my money where my mouth was because my Metro DC website sucked. It was one of the worst. And I was like, well, I'm the marketing officer. I should get to pick what website gets done first. It's going to be ours. It is beautiful now. So we're going to show it as a proof of concept, show you how easy it is to create a website like this that um, leverages collateral from national. So we have the Flickr account from national that you can take pictures from that are professional. Um, it's organized well. It's simple. And we want to do this for you so that you don't show it. Uh, if I'm connected to the internet, yes, hold on. And while you're doing that, Tom asked from Rhode Island as, um, oh, he said it is possible to see the SIG list without signing in as a member. You don't see much information. Yeah, so you just probably see the names, but not much yep. about it. Yep, so we're working to change that. We've, we've considered different things like creating videos for each SIG. Like Gen Y already does that. They create marketing videos for themselves because of course, yeah, they do a lot of fun things and they wanna show it. Hells M's could do the exact same thing. Um, so I've got somebody on my committee, Tommy Ryan, who you all know, probably Mr. Mensa from a couple of years ago, very flamboyant character. He loves um, helping out with, with social media and marketing and putting himself on camera voiceovers. So that might be a direction we eventually go if any SIGs are interested. Um, so for your website, because I have a young group member yep. helping with the website and he's very good with it, but he's busy with school. Mm -hmm. And and so how do you balance that? And like, I know he wants to help, but um, you know, with this school load, it's hard for him to do. So it's really a one-time effort with this. And then it's just updating it when you have news to share. This is not your member portal. Right. Okay. So that's something we should talk about too. Your website is not for your members so much as for your prospective right. members. Right. So what you put on it needs to be curated. It needs to be intentional. Um, members area on connect. Uh, I can show you ours as well. We've turned that into our members area where we have the discussion threads and, and different things get posted there. We've also got Facebook groups. So I would say outward facing, um, your Facebook page, not the group, is marketing right. and your website is marketing. So you don't have to update it that frequently. It's really a one-time effort and then update when you have news, like testing sessions that you want people to see. Um, and, and like I said, we can help you with the setup. Like we can make that happen. This one might've taken us like five hours. 
total to do. Um, so we have um, who we are. Oh, yep. um, you're not sharing that. You're oh, sharing I'm so that. sorry. Let me switch my share to my screen. That may be better. Can you see the website yeah. now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I've got a quick blurb on Mensa. Um, I've got some widgets, how to join Mensa. Um, uh oh, sorry, my laptop is crazy. Um, take that down. 42 degrees. It is in Kentucky. I don't know why Kentucky is showing <laughs> up here. Okay. Um, so I have a widget on what we do. Um, in DC, we're super active. Um, oh my God. <laughs> sorry, guys. All right. Um, so this talks about what we do. This is our regional gathering, the unfortunately named pandemic. I had it first <laughs> um, and we've already branded everything and paid for everything. So it would be hard to rebrand it. But this is stuff that I want people to see that we do. I want people to see that we look active, that we look fun, um, that there's an easy way to join. If you go on our national website, it is not obvious why somebody would join Mensa, which is another huge problem. Um, so that, that's on my list to fix as well. So we've got this, it's a very simple page. We have who we are, latest news. This is where we post our news. And this takes approximately one minute to post something. You're not gonna be posting here often. You're gonna be posting when you have stuff for, for external people. So Mensa Foundation scholarships are not Mensa specific. Um, they can go to non mensons I thought that was a great thing to put on our page. So we did a blurb about that. Um, we won the Diamond Award. That made sense to put out there. We're really proud of that. Um, but yeah, this takes no time at all and you can actually set it up to cross post to Facebook automatically if you want to. Um, brief facts, executive committee, you don't have to update that very often. Uh, what we do, regional gathering, young adult Mensa. Um, we set up this page. It's our Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z. See, I'm right there. Very active. Um, these are all of the things that we do. Like we've gone curling, we go to bars, we do ax throwing, we've been to the zoo. I want people to know that we're doing things and that there's people that are like them. Um, we have a similar page for youth SIG. We are adding one for teen SIG. Um, we have a group for mind games, um, something that talks about SIGs, and then our monthly newsletter. We have a how to join. We have an upcoming events, and this is new. Um, so this wasn't in our original template, but I think it's important. If you go on our national calendar and you look to see what events national is promoting, it's RGs and it's Bible study. Yeah. Yep, um, because the Bible study SIG puts their events on the national calendar. Anybody can do that. Um, but I don't know that that's representative of Mensa, like in its entirety. Probably not, and nothing against Bible study, but I wanna show all of the things that we're doing. This is cleansed, so there's no personal member data. Um, this is not showing like who to call even. It's saying, please check your cap M, which is your newsletter for host information and to RSVP. Um, there's some problems with this that we're still trying to work out. Um, we have an event called a sausage fest in the park. There are some things I can't teach and I shouldn't be expected to teach. And yet this is on our calendar. Um, this is a very well-meaning gentleman that just wants to share his international sausages. And bless his soul, it's gonna be a great event. I'm gonna to go to it, I'm gonna bring friends. Um, <laughs> is this great for our calendar? Maybe not, but this is our first stab at it. And I didn't know what policies we should have for what we put on our website. I didn't want him to feel excluded. So that's part of it too. You're right. <laughs> yeah. We want people to know that we're fun and funny and funny. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah. yeah. And you know what we do is like ours that we host at a restaurant or whatever specifically, um, we list. And then things like that that is in the community, but let's get together yep. and help. We'll do event of interest and then put the name. That's a great idea. And that, that way we know that it, we are the host. But yep. We all want to go. Yes. So, yeah, we're 
we had our games night at a comic book store and it was open to the and so whenever anybody would inquire about membership i would say hey if you want to meet people come to our games night yep. you know it's not stuff but you know not that's not happening now hopefully, hopefully soon. soon but anyway yeah. Yeah, and I thought that was hugely missing because I'm like, if I want to join, I want to know that you're active. Um, okay, so this is our connect group, which you can modify. I don't know if people know that you can modify your connect group to not be as bland as it is. I didn't know that, and I've been um, pushing this person to this website, and I think he's possibly whoever on your team. Yep. And he just has a freaking trigger, but I'm like, he has a members only section, but it isn't validated by national office. So if you want to get in there, you need to set up a thing with them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, we need to use the connect group yep. for the members only section. We're already all in that group. Yep. <laughs> it's a great place to put documentation. It's self curated because people get kicked out if they don't renew. So it truly is just members, um, which is what I like about it. As much as I don't like other things about Connect, um, I do like that. And I think it makes a great uh, members area. I've included a toolbar that takes you to relevant information for members. Yeah. And, and Tabby Day just asking and says in person audience comments are muffled for us. Could Tabby repeat? Oh, I will going forward. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. And sorry, you guys, we are all wearing masks. So, except Tabby. <laughs> okay. So, this is what we thought was important to work on because we could package it really quickly and make this an, a very low effort project if anybody wants to update their website. I think it's super important. I'm proud of what we did. I'm not a graphic artist, I made the logos for ours. And I put it on Facebook as well. We can show you our Facebook. Um, I'm also the chair of the Name and Logo Committee. <laughs> so I had to be a little careful about what we do um, with our Name and Logo. So before I, I took this over and started messing with it, our Metropolitan Washington Mensa icon on Facebook was an owl, just a generic zoo owl. And I was like, that doesn't speak to, to what we are. So I just put the Mensa. Um, and then I put a fun banner up here um, instead of cherry blossoms. Cherry blossoms speak to DC, but I want it to look like this is updated and people care. So we cross post things from our website here. Um, you can see when things are published. It's just stuff that we want external people to see. Um, some of this comes from Wired. Um, or the M leader. It's interesting articles that we're not creating ourselves. We're leveraging other people's content. Um, so you can see some of this is published by WordPress. That's the latest news that I showed you on our website that just automatically pushes out and it's really easy to set up. All right, so that's enough for my websites, but <laughs> I wanna show you the rest of the deck. Um, all right, so that, that I'm trying to handle the website thing. That was important to me. Um, how do people find your websites? Most people have no idea. Um, that affects how you're gonna market and, and where you're going to invest your time and energy. Um, so that's another thing I wanna tackle. On which social mediums does your group have an active presence? I expected Facebook and I saw Facebook. Okay, I don't know if they are groups, which are members only, or pages, which is, is external. Um, and that makes a difference, but most people are on Facebook. Um, what type of content does your group share via social media? Most are sharing chapter events um, and news. There's an opportunity to share test sessions and why and how to join MEDSA. Um, some people, I, I would say about 15 people responded that they do share test sessions, um, but only eight, why would you ever join Metsa? Which, that's, it's an opportunity. Um, does your group have an officer role whose responsibilities include the promotion of your group? Um, half of the people who responded do not have this role. It's not a priority, and I understand why. Your priority is to build your local group and keep your members happy and engaged because that's the purpose of Mensa is to have a group that you're fostering. 
um, it's my job to make people care um, about doing this. My local group, which is the second largest, we keep fighting with New York for it, um, oh. does not have this position. We don't have a publicity person. So we just recently got somebody to agree to be our social media coordinator, which is adding those posts on our website, cross posts to the Facebook page. So we're this far of the way there. I want to go all the way, but we don't, we don't have that job. Um, so does it like San Francisco or? Does somebody have that job? Somebody, yeah, somebody do. Uh, the question like was, uh, do any of the groups have that there's, job? There's some. We, we actually have a social media coordinator. <laughs> okay. And especially when there's like testing um, promotions or free prior evidence. Yep. And he'll cross through it on Instagram, Twitter, and our public Facebook page. Okay. But he says he's on social media all day long, so he was the perfect fit for yeah, that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, if you can find somebody that this does not infringe on their daily activities or they're already using those mediums, fantastic. Well, he does it for his job, so it just... Yeah, but we could also make it easier and tell you guys and give you content and give you publicity yeah. plans for the year. Like, we can tell you, this would be a fun thing to post in October. This would be a great thing to do in March. Pi Day, like... I'll go into this in the presentation. Do you regularly read Mensa Leader? I was surprised. Um, half of my ex has not read Mensa Leader and didn't know it existed. Um, I ask this because I want to know how to communicate with you. I want to know what you're reading. Um, the feedback I got at the World Gathering when I did this session was that um, if stuff comes in an email, put the content in an email, don't make us go through a paywall because if you have to click on something, you're gonna stop. So there was a public relations coordinator in Mensa Connect community that was very dead. Um, I don't know if anybody uses it or looks for it. If you do, we'll support it. Um, that's there. Um, do you know where to find recruitment ads and social graphics? This yeah. is, yeah, yeah is good. Um, it's. That at least I think is easy to find. A lot of the other supporting information is not. So I have a lot of links in this document, but like I said, I'm not gonna go through, but they are here. Um, does your group have a PR plan for the year? No, nope, we don't either. Um, I want to make a templated PR plan for you to make it easier. All right, and these are some of the comments that I thought were great. Um, <laughs> so I, I put in red the ones that I, I wanted to direct your attention to. How does your group use ads and social graphics? Um, the role doesn't have any traction. We don't advertise at all. Yep. And I love honest feedback, so I was happy to have it. Please describe the last three outreach efforts that you and your group did. We have to revive our chapter first. Um, it's not a priority, but otherwise, like this is good, good ideas that are in here for you that I wanted to be able to share. Um, like I love the comic Palooza. Um, we did something in DC with NPR. Um, so NPR is downtown and they did their tiny desk session and we rented a desk. So I sat there with Scott Snyder and we created um, Mensa trivia and we had everybody who was at the event come and see how smart they were and it was super fun. So there's things you can do with your community um, for outreach. Describe your overall membership recruitment efforts. Um, we have no proctor. <laughs> um, yeah, our current effort is to connect our members and sustain our membership. I understand the importance of it, absolutely. The last comment in red, I don't understand. And I just keep hoping somebody's gonna be in one of my sessions and tell me what it meant. Um, individual recruitment is often hampered by the bureaucracy of the national headquarters. Does that mean you need to take a test to join? I don't know. I don't. <laughs> so the question was, does that mean you need to take a test to join? Yeah, we don't know. Um, it could be because in order to even find out information, you basically have to register on the American website. You're assigned a number. Then if you want to take the test, as opposed to just the, the little the short test yeah. thing. You've got it's to a go process. through all this 
Yeah, and people give up. It's like it's not worth the effort. Okay, that's that's actually good feedback that's too. That's probably yeah. what that's about because I had some potential member, a potential test taker, explain all that to me. But they actually persisted. Yeah, but they had friends who didn't want to. It was too well, much trouble. I've never tried to apply, so that's really good feedback. Well, and I remember that you could, actually, when I tested a few years back, that you could actually go and just pay them right there. And now you, I don't think you can do that at Depends. all. Depends. You, you have to get the test voucher. Yeah. And, at libraries, public libraries, you can't exchange money. Yeah. Like, well, it depends on your location, but where we yes. use, we could. Um, but it says our proctor quit because of the decision to not let testees know their score as I understand it. So that was a change in early 2021 where the national office is no longer providing scores. I don't know much about that decision. Um, it was something our supervisory psychologist, I think, decided. Do you know any more about that, Jerry? I can weigh in on that, Tabby. Okay. Yeah, please do. Um, what happened was that we're not licensed to do psychometric testing, and it conflicted with HIPAA laws so that we have to tell people their raw score, but we cannot give them an IQ. It's kind of like the cop who gives you a speeding ticket can tell you it's $3 a mile and you were 16 miles over the limit, but he can't tell you the amount. Okay. There is a chart that tells people how their raw score correlates to an IQ, but we're not allowed to do it for them. Okay. Yeah, but that was uh, a change that was made like a while back. Last January, I think. No, no, no. What he's talking oh. about, because I tested just six years ago and it was like that. So I knew, you know, they just tell you you're in the 98th or 99th percentile and that's it. And then you can somewhat convert it. So there must have been another change that happened last year. I think there was. Tabby, there's another, I wouldn't even call it a bureaucratic problem, but I think it's a marketing problem. November being prior evidence evaluation free month. Yep. People don't have their test scores in their top drawer, and we want them to. We want it sent from the testing agency. By the time people figure out that oh, this is going on, and write to the agency and pay them whatever fee it is to send it to us. The month is long over. Yep. Uh, my assistant, Loksec, Michelle Fremont, had a great idea. If people contact National and say, hey, I want to take advantage of this free month, but it's going to take you know three weeks to get you the test scores, we should take note their name and say, okay, you've got 45 days to get the information to us, and we'll still count you as a freebie. Yep. And I don't see any problem with that. And there's no reason why we wouldn't if somebody reached out. Could you email me that so that I don't forget about it? I will do that, Tabby. Thank you. The, the other option would be to advertise, say, in September, a hey, November is mm -hmm. our free prior evidence, you know, contact yep. your, you know, and, and here's how to do it. Absolutely. Yep. When I suggested that to National, I was told, oh, if we did that, people would wait for the prior evidence month. Duh. Well, of course. Yep. But anyway. Join our group, which is what we want them to do. Yep. Yeah. So. Coming from the audience, and then they would join our group. Um, okay. Where do you typically advertise your group's test sessions? Um, one, they're never advertised, they're just set up one on one. And then we haven't had one since 2017, which mm. I hope is mitigated by the online testing now, maybe, possibly. Um, where do you feel like you need the most help with respect to local group marketing? How can I and how can my team support you? It is hard to see, but it is evenly split amongst everything that I offered um, with the website, with our use of social media, general marketing best practices, um, walkthrough of available marketing materials, a session like this, um, and how to create and leverage website content. So that's what I have my whole team working on. Um, and that's why I have such a big team. Um, and if anybody wants to join my team, I will find work for you. Um, <laughs> but this is my committee. Um, I love my committee. Um, they're fantastic people and they know exactly what they're doing. Um, so National Work Stream, I've got a marketer from Lego, um, Mariah Sima. She's fantastic. She's working with us on data campaign analytics. 
we want to know how successful our campaigns are so we know what to do and what not to do again. Um, local group work stream, um, David McAllister, he's out of Mensa 76, which is Arlington, Texas, is fantastic at promoting his local group locally. And he's put together some of the slides that I'm gonna walk you through. He's also working on putting together digital um, and print kits and support that are grab and go that you guys can order off the website. It includes everything that you would need to do marketing. Um, new programs, we work on fun things too. Um, like I've been working with some different escape rooms to say, you know, should we give you a seal of approval if, you're, if your escape room is amazing and I almost don't make it out? Um, escape rooms are excited about that idea. So we have That's some other, um, yeah, yeah, we've got fun programs um, yeah. that we're looking at. Tyler Hoffman and Tom Schorenberg. Um, Tyler's in New Orleans, Tom's in Boston. Local group websites we've talked about, I've shown you, Lana Lee, she's wonderful at what she does and she's made this super easy. And then the national website, things I talked about, like having events on the calendar that we wanna promote, um, promoting our SIGs, not having everything behind a paywall super important to me because right now to get good information you have to be logged in as a member and that defeats all the purpose so um that's what we're working on this year um this i think is kind of duplicative except that it talks through that we're going to start doing quarterly um office hours um david and i are going to run them so if you have anything i'm going to put them on the calendar um we also have the digital and print marketing kits that will be coming very soon um, things I can't help with <laughs> for our late cover. Um, yeah, this was a calendar event that we promoted. Um, yeah, um, some some of the marketing has to come from within or from lived experience. So um, available tools, there's plenty on the website that can help you. Um, we've got the ads and the social graphics and the Flickr account that has great content. We have a local group publicity guide, but I think it's very anemic. It doesn't have a, an actual PR plan for you to use um, to tell you what you could be doing in a year. Um, but you can contact Scott to get press kits and contact lists for local media. He will do that work for you. If you didn't know, he will do it. Um, we have tips to publicize test sessions, social media tips, um, LDW workshops. I looked out to see what we might have already had for LDW before I created this one. Um, being interviewed for Mensa is very niche. Like there's not a lot of people that get interviewed um, for Mensa, but there's an LDW on that. Um, developing publicity tools, how to get PR, enhancing websites. This one I did not like, it's very technical, but it has nothing to do with marketing best practices or design. So that's why we took that as our first initiative. Um, okay, so I, I don't want to go through all that. The Look Sec Handbook um, online actually includes PR coordinator um, and some information about PR. Okay, and that was the extent of my research into what's on the national website. And we are going to recurate that and make it much easier to read and find collateral that's going to help you. So last couple of slides, I wanted to talk about best practices. Um, and like I said, this is me being aspirational because I'm not my local group's marketing officer either. So um, this is a lot that David provided based on his success um, with Mensa 76. First, create a community profile. Know who in your community and what agencies or organizations you would feel comfortable tapping with like offers offers to test, offers to um, maybe like judge a high school competition, science competition, ways to get our name out there that are comfortable to you um, and that, that show that you understand your local landscape. Um, where do you find, you know, other Mensa appropriate people? Board game shops, um, that's a great example, escape rooms. Um, I know where to find them. I live in DC and it's got tons of colleges and, and universities. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, you could, uh, yeah. Can't um, hear that. Oh, he, he was saying um, you could hang flyers in the biker bars. He wants to fortify Hell's <laughs> Um You could communicate or participate in a community event. So something that David suggested was Pi Day. So select one member to explain pie to the public, bring moon pies, um, have your marketing table with the banner and just like have a fun community event. 
there is a prospective members report and an offers of membership report that could be leveraged. Um, if you send a personalized letter, I know that takes time and effort. People like to talk about themselves and to think that you care about them. Um, basic psychology. Um, so that's an offer. Um, partner with schools to speak at assemblies or college recruitment functions. Um, tell people what we can offer. Um, submit articles for publication, distribute materials, um, fully utilize your physical and your digital marketing materials for anything public facing. We have groups that will bring their Mensa flag to a restaurant. You don't have to do that. I don't know that that's the best idea, but people do it because they want to be visible. Um, another great example of being visible is adopt a highway. Like it is so cheap and your name is out there for everybody and you're seen as a civic organization. So um, post photos, this is something I try to do. I want to see, I want people to see the cool things that we're doing um, and show that we're an active group. Um, create a recruitment incentive. This is an interesting one. This is not putting everything on your marketing officer or coordinator. This is getting your members involved in giving them some of the money um, towards an event that's going to support you anyway, um, having them do some of the work for you. Um, and this is something that Mensa 76 does quite well. Um, partner with community service. I think we all do that in some capacity. Um, explore sponsoring events and including the chapter name for silent recruitment. Silent recruitment is kind of like the, the adopt a highway. Um, strive to use members that represent the culture of the local group. We are colorful and flavorful and have so much to offer um, and so many different characters to offer them out there. Um, promote quarterly testing um, or on national testing day. This is something that would be in your publicity plan. Um, you can host an annual open house. Invite the public on something like Meetup to just come and learn about Mensa. People will come. And if not, you're going to have a fun day with your members. Um, like you could just host a game night in a community center. It's super cheap. People will come, play games, learn about Mensa. Um, okay. <laughs> so we just met. <laughs> Call me, maybe. Um, I am open to feedback. I want to support you in the best way that I can. My phone rings. I will answer it. I will also answer emails. Um, I have a whole team of people who are passionate about helping you in the ways that you tell me you need help. If you don't tell me, I can't help. So please, please call me. Um, that's not me, but I, I will answer the phone just as enthusiastically as that lady. It looks like she's <laughs> answering her phone. All right, that is everything I had to present. Um, I'm trying to talk over the group next to us who might be having more fun. Uh, yeah, it, here, I'll put it back. Oh, 248-342-5486. Yep. Okay, and I'm checking the chat now to see if there are any other questions because I've lost my, my hostess. Um, thank you, Ruth, that's a very nice comment. Um, I'm happy to help. Um, Alaska Mensa is physically spread out over a huge area. Um, we need more help connecting to the public electronically and offer electronic events. That's actually, yeah. Yes, absolutely. And during the pandemic, uh, Denise, I think leveraging all of the Facebook events that were shared. So regions would put together their electronic um, events and have speakers do like keynotes online and invite other regions as well. Um, SIGs have done the same thing. Um, I know the Gen Y SIG, we host something, and, oh, I can't remember the name of it, uh, Intoxicating Interests, where everybody gets five minutes to present a PowerPoint on something that they're passionate about. And that ended up getting parlayed into something at the AG, a session where people did just that. Um, I've done one on the mating habits of marine life. Um, I know nothing about it, but I Googled it and made a great five minute presentation. These are things that can be cross-posted other places. SIGs are national. So I think that's a really good opportunity. Um, any speaker events that, that chapters post, if they post it in the region, it's very easy to get in other regions. And as an RG and an AG chair myself, 
I am in everybody's regional groups because I want to be able to promote events to everybody. So if you're, if you do the same thing, you're going to see everything else that you can cross post to your members. Just ask permission. Most people will let you do it. Thank you, Denise. And thank you everybody on the line. Please be in touch and I appreciate your time. Okay. I like the digital format. And thank you guys for coming. I appreciate you. You didn't mention that there's a lot of material on the national website, mm -hmm. but it's kind of scattered here. Yes.